Hi, this is Greg Hendricks and welcome to Meltit number 5. In this video, I'll be showing you a trick that will easily toggle Boolean variables on or off. But first, let me explain what a Boolean is. A Boolean is a data type that represents two different states. And those states can be true or false, on or off, yes or no, or one or zero. And you can use these terms interchangeably. So an example of a Boolean data type in Maya is the visibility attribute. Where I can type in zero and turns it off and type in one and turns it on. So in MEL, we don't have a Boolean data type per se, but we use an integer data type to represent it. So here I have an integer named Boolean, and I'm assigning it to equal true. And true and false are just keywords in MEL, which means the exact same as equal to one or zero. So now Boolean equals to true or one, as you see here. So when we come to this line, I'm saying boolean equals and I have an exclamation point in front of the variable name and when you see the exclamation point you think of the word not so since boolean right now is equal to true when we come to this you can think of it as not true which means this will now equal false and the syntax to use this is you need to enclose this in parentheses or you'll get an error so let's run this so now boolean equals zero or false. So now since boolean equals false, when we run this code right here again, this is saying boolean equals not false, which means now boolean will equal true. So let's run this again, and you see boolean now equals one. And if I run it again, it'll equal zero. And I keep running this to toggle it on and off So a practical example of using this is, for example, if I create a cylinder and you want to create a hotkey to toggle the isolate select on and off like this, you can get the panel that has focus by using the get panel command with the with focus flag. And here we query the state of the isolate select. And you see here if it's turned on, it equals one. And if it's turned off, it equals zero. So this is now a zero or one value. And you could use an if statement that says if isolate state is one, then turn it off right here. Or if it's off, then turn it on. But instead of doing the if statement, you can shorten this down to one line of code by doing this instead. So now if isolate state is on, then this will say not on. So now this will turn off, and if it's off, this will say not off, and this will turn on. So let's test this out. Oops. Execute, and you see now we can toggle it on and off. Another example of this is if you want to toggle the lock attribute on and off. So right now I have the cube selected. And I can run this, and it will toggle the lock state on and off. So what's going on here is first get a list of objects, loop through each object, use the list adder command with the keyboard flag to get a list of the keyboard attributes in the channel box, and loop through each attribute. And here we say we query the lock state by using the get adder command. And since this will be a zero or a one, like one or uh, zero, one, on, off, true or false. So when we come here, this is saying make it the opposite. So if it's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. So that's how that works. And this is a common, you can use this technique in any programming language basically that you're going to learn in the future. So this right here, the equivalent in Python, is this. Except in Python, instead of using the exclamation point, you actually use the word not. So this is the exact same thing we were doing earlier, where a Boolean equals true, and this will make it the opposite. And this is in C++, and right here is exactly the same. Except in C++, they have a data type called bool for Booleans. And this does the exact same thing we just learned. So. 
boolean was true and you run this now it's false so if you grasp this concept you can use this in any programming language you'll learn in the future and I just want to explain this so we're all on the same page because I'm, I'm sure I'll be using this technique in future mail tips so I just want to make a video dedicated just for this alright so that wraps up this video if you have any suggestions for future mail tips feel free to email me at greg at tdhendricks.com and I'll leave the link to my email address in the description alright so thanks for watching